particular our future gas supplies. Time has expired. Senator Waters. Thank you very much, Ms. Acting Deputy President. Uh, it's my great pleasure to rise to speak today in support of the Environment Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Amendment Bill. In my opinion, it's well beyond time that we fulsomely discussed coal seam gas and coal mines in this chamber and, of course, their effect on our precious and limited water resources, which is the subject of the bill before us today. Um, and it is a great pleasure to be doing so. Uh, the Greens bought a bill quite similar to this one to this place about 18 months ago, uh, off the back of huge scientific concern about the potential for long-term damage to our water resources and off the back of increasing community concern, which has only intensified in the intervening 18 months. So I'm pleased that uh, the government has now reconsidered its former position and have agreed that, in fact, it is incumbent upon the federal government to act in the national interest and to protect our precious groundwater and surface water uh, resources from the potential of massive damage done to it by coal seam gas and coal mines. Uh, now, there's been a lot of uh, remarks made by the coalition. Indeed, they've had several positions on this issue. It's almost difficult to, to keep up with them. Um, but uh, Senator Birmingham there has put on record that they will be supporting this bill. And I, I appreciate that support, and I think um, members of the community will be greatly relieved to finally feel like they're being listened to by this parliament after many, many years of genuine heartfelt concern <coughs> by some of those generational farming families with huge attachment to that land and huge dependence on groundwater, um, having felt abandoned by many of the other political parties, I think it will be a really lovely day for those folk to know that their parliament is finally taking an interest um, in conserving that precious water resource and protecting it from damage. I do want to put on record, though, that um, this bill, of course, isn't the panacea. This bill will simply allow the Federal Environment Minister to consider water impacts of coal seam gas and coal mining, whether or not he or she, depending on who the minister is, uh, then decides to act upon those concerns is a whole other kettle of fish. So we have today uh, a bill to put in place the process for making a good decision, but of course it remains a matter of huge ministerial discretion as to whether those scientific concerns and that community concern can be properly acted upon and whether or not our water resources actually will be protected. So I would urge uh, the current environment minister and whoever the next environment minister will be after the election, of whichever colour that may be, uh, to really take the advice of this independent expert scientific committee that this bill will now enable the minister to consider. I, I thought it a little farcical to set up a federal committee that then the minister was precluded from listening to. It seemed a bit ridiculous to me, so I'm glad we're correcting that anomaly today. Uh, now, the need for federal intervention is abundantly clear, and we've heard countless evidence from all around the nation, not just one state, as Senator Birmingham seemed to contend. I don't think he attended all of the hearings, so perhaps he missed that bit where actually there's real problems in Queensland with coal seam gas. Um, so uh, disappointed to report that it's not just confined to, to New South Wales, the concern here and the potential impact for damage. Uh, but we heard huge concern from folk in a number of Senate committees. Uh, and anyone who was watching the Four Corners report of roughly a month or so ago can see that the state processes are not properly dealing with the risks of coal seam gas and coal to our groundwater resources. Uh, we saw uh, that wonderful whistleblower, Simone Marsh, and can I put on record my admiration for that woman's courage. I understand she's been on um, leave without pay for, for the stress and anguish that she's now suffered through after blowing the whistle on those poor practices, so our, our heartfelt thanks go out to her. Uh, but she revealed that after you know, a fairly protracted environmental impact statement process done by the company, as is proper, she was then heavied by senior bureaucrats to issue approvals in sometimes as little as half a day. And she was instructed by uh, folks in the department that she was working for that there would not be a government consideration of the water impacts of two of the big coal seam gas projects, QGC and Santos, in the Coordinator General's report, which is effectively the, the summary report upon which the final decision is then made. Now, I think that um, makes an absolute mockery of the process and 
it, it clearly shows up the highly political nature of these decisions that are taken. Um, and unfortunately, we've seen that reflected at the federal level too. Previously, um, the Labor government were not so keen on this idea. In fact, I think I might have even been laughed at when I first brought this bill to parliament um, a year and a half ago. Uh, and, but what we saw earlier this year was Minister Burke tick off on Gloucester coal seam gas, uh, the big uh, proposal for coal seam gas in Gloucester, tick off on the coal mine in Moores Creek, tick off on the coal mine in Bogabri, and about a week after that, tick off on the coal mine in Tarragamba. About two days after that, he suddenly discovered that water was a problem and, gee, he would like to actually act and, and listen to scientific and community concern. Well, that's great, but unfortunately you've just ticked off on some of the largest projects in New South Wales and you've already approved the massive projects in Queensland <coughs> bar the final project, Arrow, which we hope will never see the light of day. So we do welcome this um, belated action to protect our water, but we're conscious that it comes after many concerning approvals have already been issued, <coughs> uh, and the fact that those approvals have been issued despite the scientific evidence warning of irreversible damage <coughs> to the groundwater table and warning that, in fact, we don't even understand the scope of the potential for damage. We don't even know enough about the interactions between uh, coal seams, aquifers, uh, the pressure system to know how much damage we could be doing with this industry. So the sheer abandonment of the precautionary principle uh, and the lack of concern for those long-term impacts and this overriding drive for short-term profit um, to the possible detriment in the long term of those farming communities and of our very water resources uh, is, is really um, quite, makes me very crestfallen. And I, and I think it's part of the reason, frankly, why the community is so disappointed with, with both sides of politics. Uh, be that as it may, as I've said, the, uh, the Four Corners program, I think, sadly highlighted the flaws in the state process, uh, particularly when it comes to Queensland. All the more reason for the federal government to do more and to step in and protect this national resource, that is our water. Uh, but we also heard some um, very telling evidence in the hearings into this bill uh, in New South Wales about the new U Butte revised coal seam gas rules, which were meant to solve everything. Well, unfortunately, according to the community and the experts in that state, they haven't actually solved the problem. Um, and one example was given that in times of dry, a cease to pump order can be issued that irrigators and farmers have to comply with, but that coal seam gas companies and big mining companies can seek an exemption from compliance with. So once again, you have two sets of rules, one rule for, for farming folk and for your average person in the street, and a special rule for the fossil fuel companies. So this is exactly the sort of behaviour that is yet more proof that the states are not up to the job of properly protecting water and properly acting to regulate this potentially very damaging industry. Uh, so I'm relieved that the federal government is finally uh, mm. deciding to list water and the impact on water of, from these industries as a matter of national environmental significance. I think it's long, uh, long over time that we did so. Uh, Senator Birmingham referred to a poor process in the formulation of this bill. Well, perhaps he hasn't been paying attention, but this issue has been burbling. There has been community concern, scientific concern for many years now, um, and it is it is belated action that we're seeing from the government. It is not hasty action, far from it. Um, they are finally catching up with community sentiment, and we welcome that. Uh, but on the point of process, we saw the big mining companies, frankly, chuck a bit of a hissy fit. They were annoyed that they hadn't been able to write their own rules like they normally do. And so they pulled out <coughs> of the Senate inquiry hearings about 24 hours before they were due to proceed. The irony of complaining about not being consulted and then voluntarily withdrawing from a process where they could share their views was clearly lost on them, uh, but thankfully it wasn't lost on other participants in that, in that inquiry. I want to put on record how the Greens will seek to improve this bill. Uh, because it is a good start and it does bear a very close resemblance to legislation that uh, we introduced 18 months ago, which sadly 
uh, did not receive support at that time. Uh, but there's some key things where I really think we can do better. Um, and given the debate has moved on and given the acceptance now of the need to act on this issue, I'm hopeful and I would urge senators from both sides of politics um, to really properly consider these amendments and see if they can uh, support them. Um, now, the first one I think would be particularly attractive to the opposition, given their um, on again, off again, on again, off again, on again as of last weekend position about protecting landholder rights. Um, now, Mr Tony Abbott has had a bit of a vexed position on this. He seems to be changing his mind quite frequently, but his most recent statement is that actually he does think that landholders shouldn't uh, have their livelihoods disrupted by big coal uh, seam gas companies and big coal mines, and that they should be able to say no. Well, we agree, which is why we've had legislation to allow farmers the right to say no um, ever since Tony Abbott first made those remarks. Unfortunately, he's now resiled a little from that and said, oh, even though he thinks that, that is his personal view, oh, it's just up to the states. You know, it's out of his hands. He can't do anything to fix that. Well, in good news, I have an amendment that would enable him to fix that issue and would enable this parliament to allow farmers um, the right to say, I don't want to take the risk with my land that might have been in my family for generations that actually the water resource will dry up and that my kids won't have anything to farm with. I don't want to take that risk. Uh, so it's a very simple amendment. Um, it's clearly constitutional, using the corporation's head of power. No, no need for excuses um, on that basis. And we'll, we will see if we get to move those amendments today, or perhaps whenever those, um, this bill comes back on, if we don't get to it today, we'll see just what the coalition really think about landholder rights. And, particularly whether um, the folk from the National Party are willing to put their money where their mouth is and actually act in the interests of those farming communities. So I look forward to um, the opportunity to, to give voice to those farmers who felt like they haven't had their rights respected, indeed because they have no rights in this issue. Let's, let's try and give them some. Um, the second amendment that I'll be moving to strengthen this Act um, goes to those very projects that I mentioned before. that the. Uh, Environment Minister Mr Tony Burke ticked off on just before announcing this bill. Uh, and the reason we would like this new bill to apply to those projects are they've only just been ticked off. They haven't commenced work. Um, clearly the government had an inkling that this was what they were going to do. Um, within days this bill was announced of those approvals. Uh, let's make sure that communities in that region, uh, the Namoi region, can actually get the benefit of this protection from their water resources. Um, the amendment goes further and says, given that we still have some projects in Queensland that haven't yet been approved, thank goodness, um, namely the Arrow coal seam gas project, let's make those existing three coal seam gas uh, proponents, uh, QGC, Santos and AGL, let's make them do these water studies, because they got off scot-free last time. Look at the process that was exposed on Four Corners. Government didn't even properly scrutinise water impacts. Let's make them do those studies and put that information on the table so that the federal minister can be properly armed with that information when making future decisions. So not an interruption of their approval process, no acquisition of rights, no change to their legal status, but simply an obligation to now supply that information, turn their minds to that water impact um, and inform our decision makers of the consequences of future decisions on other projects. Uh, so that's a very important amendment that um, will overcome, I think, the, the cynicism in the minister's announcement and the timing of the announcement of this bill. Uh, now, the, uh, the third of, of my four amendments goes to the scope of this bill, and it goes to the fact that it's not just coal seam gas that is threatening our groundwater and our surface water on the east coast, but it's also shale gas and tight gas, which we have across this country. It seems strange to me that we are considering contemplating creating two tiers of rights, that east coast folk where coal seam gas is could have their water able to be protected by the minister if he or she makes the right decision based on the evidence, but that folk in the south, in the west, um, in the north don't have that same level of protection from shale gas mining extraction, using similar extraction processes which likewise have similar uh, potential impacts on water. Let's make sure that we're not creating a two-tiered system here with two tiers of rights, and let's make sure that all of those unconventional gas resources can be treated the same and can be scrutinised for their potential uh, to damage our water resources. 
So again, I look forward to um, a very sensible amendment to, uh, to put all unconventional gas on the same uh, playing field. The final amendment um, that I'll be looking forward to moving relates <coughs> to the amendment that was made in the House to this bill. And I'm really pleased uh, that Mr Tony Windsor moved the amendment that he did after many discussions with, with many folk and including uh, community groups to make sure that this new power to protect water isn't simply given right back down to the very state governments who frankly stuffed it up in the first place. It's a crucial amendment and it says that that little section in the environment laws where you say you can hand off your federal approval powers to states, write yourself completely out of the picture, you can't do that for water. I think that is really important. But what we've now seen is, again, we're creating two classes here. We've got a special rule for water where those powers need to stay where they belong in federal hands. Uh, but all of those other matters of national environmental significance, which are, as the name suggests, nationally significant and sometimes internationally significant in the case of World Heritage, <coughs> uh, uh, migratory birds, uh, wetlands um, and threatened species, those ones can be given away to state premiers. And we've seen the environmental legacy of state premiers. The whole genesis of the federal in, uh, involvement in the environmental arena came from the Franklin Dam, as we all know, when Bob Hawke um, stepped in and said to the states, no, look, it is too important. You cannot simply trash the Franklin River. Um, we're going to take it all the way to the High Court using our constitutional uh, means of doing so, using the foreign affairs power, um, and protect this river in the national interest. I think it would be a great shame if a Labor government 30 years on then undid that very important reform, which was really the springboard, springboard for all of our federal environmental regulation um, henceforth for 30 years. So we have 30 years of environmental protection at stake, and I will be moving to say that that little section where it simply says, <coughs> inoffensively, <coughs> section 46, you can accredit the states to do your approval decision for you, my amendment will be to delete that section. And the effect of that will be that the federal government will always have to tick off on a damaging development in a World Heritage area. It will always have the power to veto something that's going to have that significant impact on something that's so nationally significant that the government has seen fit to protect it. I think those powers uh, to act in the national interest should stay in national hands. We don't expect the states to act in the national interest. It's not their job. Um, they will always act in their own interest, and, and that's what they're meant to do. So let's make sure that this national government can act in the interests of all Australians and protect those places that are too precious to lose and those species that are so unique uh, and so special to Australia that they are a part of our very identity. This is a really important amendment because we know that the coalition have said on many occasions that they will use that power, they will hand off those approval powers that sit now with the federal government, they'll give those away to state premiers. And the thought of Campbell Newman, Premier Campbell Newman in Queensland, having even more power to wind back even more laws than he already has, we're up to about 12 environmental protections now that he's wound back, the thought of him having sole say over our nationally significant environmental icons sends shivers down my spine, and I hope sends shivers down the spine of, of well, at least half of the chamber. I mean, you know, I'll let you guys off the hook, given that it's your side that's um, running the states in the main. Uh, but I think, as a question of process, no matter what colour you're, you're from, we need to make sure that you don't simply have one level of government in sole control. We need the national government to act in the national interest, and that is why it is crucial that in these last few weeks of our sittings that this Labor government takes the chance to protect its very own legacy, that original intervention of Bob Hawke, which has led to the Commonwealth being able to step up and protect the environment. Let's make sure that those powers can be maintained. Uh, so I congratulate the government and I certainly congratulate Mr Tony Windsor <coughs> on bringing this bill forward. Um, it is long overdue. It will provide the framework to protect water from coal seam gas and coal mines. It will still be up to the minister's discretion whether that eventuates, and I would urge the minister to listen to the science, the advice of that independent scientific committee, the advice of CSIRO, the advice of the National Water Commission, uh, and take proper decisions and act employing that precautionary principle that he, he or she is meant to employ when making those decisions. We don't know if coal seam gas is safe. 
all indications are that it is going to do um, immeasurable damage to our aquifers. We know that it leaks like a sieve, so it's no, it's no better than coal when it comes to climate impacts. Um, and we know that if Australia is going to continue to be a net food exporter in this age of food insecurity that's coming, that we need to safeguard that precious farmland that, that is so, uh, so unique to us. Uh, so I commend this bill.